Hey guys, happy Friday. I hope you guys are all doing awesome. So today for ELA, what we're gonna do is we are going to be hearing two stories. Um, one is the traditional Cinderella and the other one is seriously Cinderella is so annoying. I'm gonna be reading the traditional and then Miss Taylor is going to randomly appear in the video and she's gonna start reading seriously Cinderella is so annoying. So while you are reading these, hearing these stories, it would probably be best if you had your assignment pulled up because it is going to help you while you are listening to answer the questions. So let me go ahead and show you what your assignment is going to be for today. So let me share my screen with you. All right, so your assignment for today, when you get into Canvas and you click your modules or your reading button, you have to click your reading button first, and whether your teacher has it set up to where you click your Friday button or your module button, you are going to be doing a Cinderella versus, um, tr excuse me, traditional Cinderella versus um, seriously Cinderella is so annoying questions. So there's going to be four questions that you're going to ask. The directions say click the gray box below to access today's assignment. Think back to the read alouds um, to answer the questions about each book. If needed, please come back to listen to this, these stories again and then answer them. Remember to hit the blue submit button so that your teacher can provide you feedback. So your assignment looks like this. There are four questions that you're gonna answer in complete sentences. So your first question says, who is talking in traditional Cinderella? Is it a character? Is it a narrator? Is it um, someone who's outside of the story? What point of view is it in? Is it in first, second, or third? And then you're gonna tell me how the other characters feel about Cinderella in this traditional version, in the regular version. Then you're gonna answer the same questions about seriously Cinderella is so annoying. Um, Ms. Taylor's gonna read this to you. You are going, you're gonna um, answer who is talking in seriously Cinderella is so annoying. And then you are going to answer how the characters feel about Cinderella in this version. All right, so let's go ahead and let me stop sharing my screen. And we are going to switch to the ladybug and begin reading. Cinderella. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful girl named Cinderella. She was so kind that even the mice and the birds were her friends. Each morning, the birds woke her from her sweet dreams with their song. So already with the first page, I am hearing um, some of what we call the pronouns. And there is um, she, her, 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 there. So I'm starting to think that this is already in a third person point of view. And it's saying her name. Cinderella lived there with her cruel stepmother and two stepsisters, Anastasia and Drizella. They treated her like a servant. Cinderella had to do all the cooking and sewing and washing and scrubbing. Her stepsisters never did any work. Oh, I would not be happy. One day a royal messenger came to the house. He brought a letter from the king. The stepmother read the letter. The king was giving a royal ball for the prince that night. Every girl in the kingdom was invited. That means I can go, cried Cinderella. Her stepsisters laughed. They are not nice to Cinderella. Imagine Cinderella dancing with the prince, Drizella cackled. She's only fit to dance with the brooms, added Anastasia. But the letter says every girl is invited, Cinderella insisted. So it does. The stepmother agreed. You may go if you get all of your work done here. And if you can find something to wear. Oh, thank you, said Cinderella. She quickly ran up to her room. Cinderella pulled a dress out of her trunk. This was my mother's dress, she told the mice. Isn't it lovely? It just needs some decoration. Cinderella's mice had never seen her so happy. A thin, mice, a thin mouse named Jack thought Cinderella would be the prettiest girl at the ball. A fat mouse named Gus agreed. Cinderella took out her sewing basket. I'll need a stack, 
I'll need a stash, a sash and some beads, she said. So still, we're, we're a little bit of the way into the story and she is, the point of view is still third person. So the narrator is telling the story. Just then her stepmother shouted, Cinderella! Cinderella hurried downstairs. Cinderella, wash the floors, her stepmother ordered. But I washed them yesterday, Cinderella said. We'll wash them again, snapped the cruel woman, and dust the drapes and clean the windows and finish the sewing. The mice felt sorry for C Cinderella. Cinderella, do this, Cinderella, do that, Jack said. Cinderella will never have time to fix her dress. Then her stepmother won't have to let her go to the ball. Poor Cinderella, Gus agreed. One of the mice had an idea. Why don't we fix the dress for Cinderella? We can do it. All the animals agreed to help. Drizella and Anastasia were getting ready for the ball. This sash is old, Anastasia said. These beads are horrible, Drizella said. They threw their things away. Gus and Jack took the sash and the beads. Pretty, pretty, Gus exclaimed. Shh, Jack hissed. He was afraid that they would wake Lucifer the cat, but the mice made it safely back to the attic. Soon, every beak and paw was busy. The animals measured and cut and sewed while they worked. Look at them putting together this pretty dress. Cinderella helped her stepsisters with their gowns. Soon it was time to leave for the ball. Why, Cinderella? Her stepmother sneered. You're not ready. What a shame. Cinderella slowly climbed the stairs to her room. Oh well, what's a royal ball, she said. It would probably be dull and boring, and Cinderella sighed. Completely wonderful. But her dress wasn't finished, so she couldn't go. <clears throat> Cinderella opened the door to her room. Surprise, shouted the mice and birds. Cinderella thought she was dreaming. Her dress was beautiful. Oh, thank you, she told her little friends. She put on the gown and hurried downstairs. Isn't my dress lovely? May I go to the ball? Asked Cinderella. Anastasia and Drizella gasped. <gasps> Mother, she can't. Well, we did have a bargain, began the stepmother. At that moment, the sisters recognized the things she'd thrown away. My sash, Anastasia wailed. My beads, Drizella shrieked. The sisters tore at Cinderella's gown. They took back the sash, the bead, and the beads. Cinderella was left in rags. Then Drizella and Anastasia went to the ball with their mother. These sisters are not nice. Cinderella ran into the garden. She tried to remember her sweet dreams, but she didn't think they would ever come true. Her animal friends had never seen her so sad. There's nothing left to believe in. Nothing, Cinderella sobbed. She didn't notice the lights that twinkled and danced all around her. But Jack and Gus did. They could hardly believe their eyes. The lights turned into a kind looking woman. The woman patted Cinderella's head and said, you must believe in something or I couldn't be here. And here I am, so dry your tears. Now, where did I put my wand? The woman was Cinderella's fairy godmother. Everything she needed to help Cinderella was right in the garden. The fairy godmother waved her wand, bibbidi bobbidi boo. The four mice became four white horses. Bibbidi bobbidi boo. A pumpkin turned into a beautiful coach, and a horse became a coachman, and a dog became a footman. The fairy godmother was pleased. Hop in, my dear. We can't waste time, she urged. Don't you think my dress? Cinderella began. Good heavens, child. You can't go like that, said the fairy godmother. Bibbidi bobbidi boo. Suddenly, Cinderella was wearing a gown of her dreams, 
and on her feet she wore glass slippers. Glass slippers, excuse me. The fairy godmother, the fairy godmother said, "Like all dreams, my magic must end. At midnight, the spell will be broken." Cinderella promised to be home before midnight. Off she rode to the ball. The ball had already begun. The king was not very happy. He wanted his son to marry. The prince had danced with all the girls at the ball, but he had not fallen in love with any of them. Love at first sight only happens in fairy tales, the duke told the king. At that moment, Cinderella made her entrance. The prince star stared in wonder. Here was the girl of his dreams. The prince asked Cinderella to dance. C Cinderella and the prince danced around the ballroom. Everyone wondered about the beautiful girl. Do we know her? Drizella asked. The prince seems to, Anastasia said jealousy. There's something familiar about her, the stepmother said. When the dance ended, Cinderella and the prince walked into the garden. They were falling in love. <clears throat> Suddenly, the clock began to strike midnight. I must go, cried, uh, cried Cinderella. Wait, called the prince, but Cinderella couldn't wait. As she fled, she lost one of her glass slippers. <clears throat> the prince showed the glass slipper to the duke. Find the girl whose foot fits this I slipper. I will marry her. Uh, said the prince. Meanwhile, Cinderella's dress and pumpkin, excuse me, Cinderella's dress had become rags again. The coach was now a pumpkin. The horses had become mice again. And the coachman and footman turned back into the horse and a dog. All Cinderella had left was one glass slipper. The duke searched the entire kingdom for the girl whose foot fit the slipper. Soon, everyone knew that the prince would marry that girl. When Cinderella heard this, she got a dreamy look in her eyes. The stepmother saw the dreamy look. She didn't want Cinderella to marry the prince. Look at her being all jealous back there. So she locked Cinderella in her room. The stepmother put the key in her pocket and left. Gus and Jack saw everything. We've got to get that key, Jack cried. Gus agreed. The two brave mice managed to get the key from the stepmother's pocket. They struggled to get the big heavy key up the tall, sta at the, the tall stairs. Jack and Gus had to hurry. The duke had just arrived. His footman carried the glass slipper. Anastasia tried on the slipper. Her foot was much too big. Drizella, Drizella tried next. She couldn't even fit her toes into the slipper. They've got some big meaty feet. Are there any other ladies in the house? Asked the Duke. There is no one else, um, the stepmother answered. The Duke was about to leave when, what do you think is gonna happen? The Duke was about to leave when Cinderella came down the stairs. Jack and Gus had freed her. May I try on the slipper? She asked, but the cruel stepmother tripped the footman. The footman fell and the slipper broke. Luckily, Cinderella had the other glass slipper. Of course, it fit perfectly. Cinderella and the prince were soon married. It was Cinderella's dream come true. Uh, Jack and Gus weren't surprised because they always knew that if you kept on believing, if you keep on believing, that's just what dreams do. The end. All right boys and girls. So what I want you to do is I want you, before we hear the other story, I want you to take a second and think about the questions that um, we have to answer or you have to answer. So let me share my screen again. All right. So your questions are, remember, who was talking in this traditional Cinderella? We know that the point of view was third person point of view. So who talks when it's third person point of view? And then how do the other characters feel about Cinderella in this version? So how do um, Drizella and Anastasia and the stepmother feel about Cinderella in this version? 
All right, in just a second, I'm going to disappear, and Miss Taylor will be here to read the version of Seriously, Cinderella is So Annoying. Hey, everybody. So, Mr. Cavender just left. I'm in here. That's why I took off my mask. I'm by myself. He just read to you the traditional story of Cinderella, so the original one that we have known for so long, and it's been passed down from generation to generation, so even though it might not be exactly like all the rest of the traditional stories, it's very similar. I'm going to be reading to you a story, and it's going to be backwards, and like backwards, but it won't under the ladybug. It's called, Seriously, Cinderella is so annoying. Because, you know, not everybody has the same opinion about people. Some people might think Cinderella is prissy and that she gets her way because she's so beautiful and so kind. Whereas others think that think that she deserves what she has um, been given at the end of the traditional story, the prince and all that good stuff. Well, let's read how seriously Cinderella is so annoying and these characters' point of view on Cinderella. Now, if I look at the title... Seriously, Cinderella is so annoying. How do you think the characters feel about Cinderella? I think they think she's annoying because it's in the title. Seriously, Cinderella is so annoying. We all know those people who are annoying. We shouldn't really say annoying because it's kind of rude, but um, just not fun to be around because they get on your nerves. So pay attention to point of view and who is telling the story. If you remember to Mr. Cavender's Zoom yesterday, when we watched the vocabulary, he said we were going to watch it every day. We're talking about point of view. It says, first person is me, second person is you, third person is he, third person is she. So think about those pronouns as I'm reading so that it can help you know who is telling this story. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Coming down here, I'm learning how to use all this equipment. I'm going to do the ladybug, and there we go. So seriously, Cinderella is so annoying. I mean, let's use our inferencing skills here. Look at that illustration. Look at the stepmother. She doesn't look like she's having a very good time. Look at her eyes. She looks rather annoyed. Then you got these stepsisters over here, and they're like, oh my gosh, be quiet. And Cinderella in her own little world, like, la -da 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 -da. not everybody's cup of tea, non-literal language. I don't literally mean cup of tea. It's just not everybody's person they want to be around. All right. Oh, this is a brand new book, Mr. Cavender. It's like so hard to bend down. It says, you must have heard of me, the wicked stepmother. Not true. It's just another one of Cinderella's wild stories. Not as wild as the one about the pumpkin and the fairy godmother. The real story, the true story began with some chatter and some dust. Kind of reminds me of the true story of the three little pigs, how the wolf tells the story, his point of view in that one, and how it's really not how the pigs told the traditional story. But you know, you gotta think for yourself and listen to all the evidence and then make your judgment. All I ever wanted was a husband and a mansion. Before I married Cindy's father, my two darlings and I had met Cindy only a few times. The girl had seemed normal then. After I married Cindy's father, my darlings and I moved in. When I had just one foot on the front step, my dear husband kissed me goodbye and said, I'm off on business. Hmm, a little rude. He leaves often, Cindy said, but the animals stay put. They talk, they joke, they sing. They even help out, especially the bluebirds. So, I mean, you walk up to somebody and you find out that they say that animals can talk and sing and help with chores. You might think they're a little um, loony. It's like a little cuckoo in the head. Now, I don't mind a story, but I like facts, not fiction. Soon, the girl was talking all kinds of hokey pokey. Once upon a time, Cindy said, one of the bluebirds became blue, not to the color, the feeling. His friend had flown south. My darlings and I were stuck near the front door. I just wanted to put away my bags, and that's when I saw it. Dust. Dear, is the whole house this dusty, I asked. I don't think, Cindy said. I'll give you a tour. Let's see if I can fix this um, focusing. 
Let's zoom in just a little bit. Sorry, friends. I just don't like it to be so blurry for you. All right, there we got Cindy giving the tour. In the dining room, Cindy told stories. They don't look too pleased. In the study, Cindy told stories non-stop. Look at that prefix, non. That means she didn't stop talking. Girls, I said, time to get to work. This place needs a good cleaning. Once upon a time when I was cleaning, Cindy started. Oh, boy. There she goes, telling her stories again. Cindy mopped the floor, but she finished so fast. My darlings had barely started. Did you know that robins and sparrows are my friends, she said. But the sparrows don't like the robins. Silly creatures. Once upon a time, one of the robins, Cindy, dear, I said, why don't you go and wash the clothes now? Hmm. And there she is, just talking, 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 and everybody's a little annoyed. But Cindy washed them so fast. How on earth did she do it? I had to find another chore for her just to keep her busy. If there's one thing squirrels love, it's washing clothes, Cindy said. The rats, though, would rather iron. You know, one day I, squirrels and rats doing laundry, quit telling such foolish stories, I said. Remember, I, that's the stepmother talking. Stop, just go do your work. Time passed, but nothing changed. In the garden, Cindy told stories. In the kitchen, Cindy told stories. Look, they got their earmuffs on trying to like tune her out. At dinner, I couldn't hear myself think. Dear, please, I said, stop talking. But Cindy didn't stop. I mean, you make a judgment. Do you think somebody who doesn't stop talking is annoying or do you think they're pleasant? I guess it depends on if you're an introvert, somebody who likes to be alone, or an extrovert, extrovert, somebody who likes to be around people. One day, a letter arrived. It was an invitation to the king's ball. The prince would surely fall in love with one of my darlings. Then they would marry, live in a beautiful castle, and one day be king and queen of all the land. Oh, stepmother, I have to go too, said Cindy. Once upon a time, a girl and a prince. And just then, just like that, Cindy lost her voice. Imagine, it had to be from all that storytelling. What could I do? I told Cindy she had to stay home for her health. She cried, of course, but a ball was no place for a sick girl. She needed rest. Sometimes it's so hard being a stepmother. And there's Cindy. She's crying because she had to stay home all alone because she had lost her voice. Now, in my opinion, I don't think you should have to stay alone because you lost your voice. That's not something that's contagious. At the ball, my darlings twirled. They whirled. And then some strange girl waltzed in. Her gown was magnificent. I couldn't take my eyes off of it. I wondered how much it had cost and if my seamstress could copy it for me. The prince and the girl danced and pranced. My poor darlings would left Prince List. Look at that suffix, List. They didn't have a prince anymore. Because look who got him. <laughs> a few days later, the prince made an announcement. A glass slipper had been left at the castle. The prince would marry the girl whose foot it fit our big chance. After visiting every other mansion in the neighborhood, the prince's valet arrived at our door. Me, me, said my darling. Me, me, said the other. One at a time, said the valet. Look at that shoe. It is not going to fit their ginormous feet. But remember, Cindy's boy. Each girl tried, but the other shoe didn't fit, or excuse me, but the shoe didn't fit. Then Cindy pushed out a whisper. Prince, let me try. The shoe fit. 
Cindy pulled the match out of her pocket. What? My darlings cried. Cindy pushed out another whisper. She said something about a pumpkin coach in mice that turned into horses. She ever had, or excuse me, she ever added a fairy godmother. Excuse me, that says even. I didn't see that, that, that in. I thought it was an R and it makes sense. So I went back and reread it. Question myself like you should do. Good readers should go back and question yourself. She even added a fairy godmother. Please, there's no such thing. But I still don't know where she got those shoes. Like, oh my gosh, how did she get that shoe? A few days later, the prince married Cindy. Poor man, he had no idea what he was getting himself into. But we lived happily ever after because they got to move into the castle too, unlike the traditional story of Cinderella. All right, so what you are going to do now, I'm gonna come over here, get my screen back up so you can see me. Ta-da! You are going to answer some questions regarding point of view. Who is telling the story? Remember, first person is me, second person is you, third person is he, third person is she. Now in the story, seriously, Cinderella is so annoying. We, learned, we heard a lot of I, I, my, my darlings. And then she referred to Cinderella as Cindy. Who am I referring to when I say she referred to Cinderella as Cindy and her darlings? That is a hint, hint of who is telling the story. So now that you've heard both stories, now I want to hear your point of view. Who do you think or which story do you think is more along what you believe? Do you think Cinderella is really a good character? and deserve to end up with the prince? Or do you think she was really annoying because she couldn't stop talking and um, maybe one of the stepmother's daughters should have maybe ended up with the prince? That's your opinion, your point of view. All right, so when you're finished, you are, or when I'm finished talking, you're gonna go over to your assignment and complete it. Do your best and make sure you submit it when you're finished. Bye boys and girls.